Well, g'day, curd nerds. Today we're making quick mozzarella. Yes, quick mozzarella is very simple to make. Uh, you don't need any starter cultures. You need a bit of rennet. You need a little bit of lipase if you want. You don't really need that. Uh, and some citric acid. So this cheese is not to be confused with traditional or low fat mozzarella or even buffalo mozzarella or mozzarella di buffalo, uh, which the authentic version is called. This is just a quick and dirty mozzarella, not really a beginner's cheese unless you follow this tutorial and I'll be showing you some crucial steps and things to look at when you're making this type of mozzarella. It's not for beginners. I must say that now, it's more of an intermediate cheese. Anyway, let me get on and show you how we make quick mozzarella. So firstly, we sanitize all of our equipment as always. I'm just boiling mine in a little bit of water for 15 minutes. The ingredients for this cheese is four liters or four quarts of whole milk, one and a half level teaspoons of citric acid, which is dissolved in quarter of a cup of non-chlorinated water, one eighth of a teaspoon of lipase dissolved in quarter of a cup of cool non-chlorinated water, and that's optional, a half a teaspoon or 2.5 milliliters of liquid rennet uh, diluted in quarter of a cup of cool non-chlorinated water and one teaspoon of salt or some brine. So heat your milk to 13 degrees Celsius or 55 Fahrenheit. And while that is happening, we measure out all of our ingredients, making sure that that citric acid is indeed level. Adding the water, giving it a little bit of a stir to make sure it's all dissolved. Then I've got my lipase, which is an enzyme. Just putting that in and mixing that with some water as well. Now this needs to sit for about 20 minutes. Uh, so it incorporates into the milk properly. So always do your lipase ahead of time. We're measuring out the rennet and we're diluting that in cool non-chlorinated water as well. There we go. So all the ingredients are set up, are ready to go for the cheese making. So at 13 degrees, we're going to add in our first ingredient, which is the lipase. Now, if you don't have lipase, that's okay. You don't really need it. It just adds a little bit of flavor the next day. If you're gonna eat it the same day, don't worry about the lipase at all. So give that a good stir through. Now we're gonna add the citric acid solution. So pour that in. And give it a good stir. Now you may see the milk slightly curdle. I'm now heating it up to 33 Celsius or 90 Fahrenheit and before it gets much hotter I need to check something. I need to check the pH or the acidity of the milk. So I'm getting a teaspoon, a tablespoon there and just scooping it out of the pot and I'm going to test it with a pH strip. So dip that in. Don't put the milk back in because it might be contaminated with whatever's on the pH strip. And we're aiming for a pH of between 5 and 5.3. This is essential to make sure that your curds or your mozzarella will stretch. Now notice it's slightly curdled on the top but once you stir that back in the curdling kind of goes away but we're heating that up now to the target temperature uh, of the uh, 33 degrees Celsius nearly there there we go close enough so now we're going to add the rennet while start slowly stirring, so we stir for no more than about 30 seconds because it tends to split because of the high acidity of the milk. Uh, so no more than 15 seconds, sorry, I'll correct myself. So we're gonna let that set now, so cover that, 
let it set for five to ten minutes. So in this instance, I set mine for five minutes. And then we uh, check for a clean break. Now, because the, the milk is very acidic, it uh, it is set straight away. Now, you notice the curd kind of looks a little bit sloppy. We're just going to cut that into 2.5 centimetre or one inch columns. If I had left it for the 10 minutes, it probably would have been just okay as well. I'm going to heat the curds to 40 degrees Celsius or 105 Fahrenheit. Notice the curds kind of may fracture, they have in my case anyway, but they look like scrambled eggs. And that's okay. Don't throw it away. Now if the way is clear, then you're certainly okay to proceed. If it's all cloudy, then something's gone wrong. That either the pH levels aren't correct or you're using ultra heat treated milk and that won't work for this recipe. So you can see there that we've got a nice yellowish or clear whey and the curds are kind of liking, looking like scrambled eggs. So we're going to transfer the curds into a cheesecloth lined colander now. So just putting a wet uh, cheesecloth that I boiled and tipping the curds into it. This will separate out the curds in the whey. There we go. So we're going to place the curds, we only drain that for about a minute tops. Now to make sure that everything's gone okay, you will find that the curds don't stick to the cheesecloth, they should come away cleanly and put them into a microwave proof bowl. As you can see there, everything came along way cleanly, very good. Okay, so we're going to microwave on high for one minute. Now, if you don't have a microwave, I'm going to put an alternative recipe down into the description of the video so you can still follow along. Okay, one minute's up. Now some of the whey should be expelled and just pour that off with your hand. Depending on the quality of the milk, this is very good quality milk and I found that uh, the cheese started to melt already. It was it was almost ready to stretch now, but I followed through with the recipe. Just give that a very gentle knead. It's very hot. Uh, and uh, yeah, we need to pour off that excess whey. If it's cloudy like that, that's fine as well. So we're going to pop it back in the microwave on high for another 30 seconds. So once it's finished, pull it out. Just fold it over a little bit. This is very stretchy. I probably could have stretched it now, as you can see, it's very stretchy, but I wanted to get a little bit more moisture out of it. So pour off uh, any of the whey. It's very hot. Just knead it a little bit. Yeah, too hot for my sensitive IT hands, that's for sure. So it's best to use heavy rubber gloves. Now I should have had them ready because I've made this recipe so many times now and they really come in handy. These are nice and clean. I clean them after every cheese making session where I use them. So I'm just going to give them a wash in hot soapy water now. And then rinse them off. There we go. Also got some white vinegar handy in that bottle there, just not diluted or anything. Just give that a quick spray. And we're all ready to handle it. So carefully knead it to release some of the whey. Now, like I said, at this stage, I probably could have formed it into balls. It is uh, very stretchy as it is, but it didn't make uh, a shiny surface. So I knew that it probably needed to be heated up a little bit more so watch for the shiny surface then you'll know it's ready to form into balls and put into the cold water so it's not quite hot enough it's not stretching enough for my liking so we're going to pop it back in the microwave again in a second so 
So for a final time, pop it in for uh, a final 30 seconds on high. Just cleaning off my gloves there. There we go. As the warning says, careful, it's hot. It is indeed. Right, so you can add the salt now, the one uh, teaspoon of salt. Uh, or salt it to your taste, of course, you can do that. But uh, in my excitement of all the stretching, I forgot to add the salt. So you can brine this cheese as well, and you'll see that step in the next stage. So after a good stretching there, didn't stretch it too much, as you noticed. But it's certainly hot enough to keep stretching. So it's ready to make that surface nice and shiny. I decided to stretch it some more just because I'm a show off. There we go. So the surface is now shiny on the mozzarella. So pull off a piece and form it into a ball shape. You just fold it over and then between your thumb and forefinger give it a bit of a squeeze and a ball comes off. There we go. There's one. Pop it in the cold water. Now I used to put these in iced water but I've changed that because uh, I don't want them cooling down so rapidly on the outside that the inside stays hot. So I found that cool water works a lot better. So I'm just squeezing off another mozzarella ball there. There we go, pop it in the water. Probably get a couple more out of this. There we go. Nice and shiny. There we go. Give it a bit of a twist. And we've got another ball. Fantastic. And for the final one. So I've got four decent sized mozzarella balls out of this. Or maybe more. <laughs> and a little one at the end. So we just allow those to cool for 10 minutes in the cool water. Now if you've already salted them, uh, forego this step. You don't need to do this. So if you choose to brine them, pop them in the saturated 18% brine for 10 minutes. And there's a recipe link for the saturated brine coming up now. Okay, so once they're brined for the 10 minutes, you can remove them from the brine and serve or store. Uh, you probably only store them for one day because they tend to go a little bit flat uh, in the container in the fridge. So I tend to eat them straight away fresh. Uh, or serve them up within a few hours. So you just simply slice them and if you want to make a, a Calabrese salad then you can just slice them up, slice some tomato and some basil, basil with a little drizzle of olive oil and they'll turn out absolutely fantastic. So they look lovely. A bit of tomato for the taste test and a few crackers. Lovely. And there they are in all their glory. So serve with fresh tomato, fresh basil if you've got it, uh, and drizzle with olive oil, and don't forget the salt and pepper. Anyway, over to Gav for the taste test. So we've made the quick mozzarella. It was very simple. One thing I forgot to do was, and you'll see that in the instructions before this, uh, is that I forgot to add the salt at the third microwaving. What you can do is just pop it in brine like I did. I put it in brine for about 10 minutes uh, and it turned out fine. So it slices very, very well. It is stringy. It pulls apart like normal mozzarella does, which is absolutely fantastic. That's what I like to see. It's just the right amount of salt. So let's just try a little bit of mozzarella, quick mozzarella, not to be confused with the real thing. Bit of tomato. What I need is some pepper and salt. Back again, some pepper and salt. You cannot have this without a bit of pepper and salt. There we go, look at that. And let's 
bang it in. Mm. Oh, I've dropped half of it. Oh. This is delicious. It's even got a little bit of a squeak to it. Mmm, that is nice cheese. Oh, I'm dropping it everywhere. Mmm, too good to drop. No, that's very nice. It's not creamy like um, buffalo mozzarella. You won't get that with cow's milk. Um, I use the nice unhomogenized milk. Uh, one of the best ones you can get here in Australia anyway. And it is salted just right. It's not creamy, um, but it is certainly stringy and it tastes lovely. So there we go, look, there's some stringiness. That's from the minimal stretching that I did. Mmm. Well, can't stop eating, it's so good. Mmm. It is a quick and dirty cheese, there to impress people and impress yourself. It certainly impressed me this time around. I really enjoyed it. So very simple to make. If you want to get the ingredients or the kits, pop over to littlegreenworkshops.com.au. You'll see there's mozzarella kits there. Uh, and uh, yeah, you will have no trouble making it from this, that kit. So if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed already, then please do so and ring that little bell and you'll be notified of all the cheesy content on the channel. Well, thanks for watching, Curd Nerds, and I will see you next time.